Hey guys, so today is another true crime and makeup video, but before we get started, the word for today is GRI. 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 Well done guys, you just said grey. So my usual disclaimer for today's video, all the information I'm giving you is already found in the public domain. I also don't mean any disrespect to anyone I talk about in the video, this is for educational purposes only. And all the information I'm giving you in today's video is already found in the public domain. And very quickly, a trigger warning, today's case takes us in England and we are talking about another child murder so if this is something which triggers you then by all means you can step out of the video and I will see you in the next one for everyone else thank you for staying with me and let's get into it February the 2nd 2022 seemed like any other day Carol Hodgson fed and dressed her handsome two-year-old son Daniel Green at their Gisborough home but Carol knew that day would be Daniel's last day in fact, she made a horrific plan that it would be her last day as well. What could have driven her to commit the unspeakable acts that followed? So, let's find out. Daniel James Hodgson Green was born in 2020 to his mother Carol Hodgson and his father Stephen Green. There's not a lot of details out there in terms of the family or the history but we do know that Carol and Stefan separated at some point when Daniel was a baby and Carol seemed to try and stop any contact with Daniel's dad. She wouldn't let Stefan know when they changed the dresses or when Daniel would go on holiday somewhere. She wouldn't allow Stefan to see Daniel at all. She completely cut him off from his son's life. And so Stefan was fighting in court to get to see his son more often and he was also trying to stop Carol from changing Daniel's last name. Daniel was Stefan's whole world. When he was born, he was like his shining star. He was the center of his world. When he was a baby, Daniel would always laugh and he loved being in his dad's arms. But unfortunately, Carol soon started to cut Daniel off completely from Stefan. So Stefan and his family, Stefan's parents, missed everything in Daniel's life. All his milestones, his personality, everything. They couldn't get to see him taking his first steps, saying his first words, seeing how he would develop from a baby to a toddler. They were not even allowed by Carol to be in Daniel's life. 39-year-old Carol Hodgson seemed to live a normal everyday life who wouldn't regularly interact with her neighbors. She was seen pushing a pram or putting Daniel into the car on some occasions. Nobody ever suspected that when the door of two upper guard gardens in North Yorkshire closed on that fateful day of February the 2nd, Daniel Hodgson Green would never be seen alive and well again. Police attended a home in Upper Guard Gardens, Gisborough, on Wednesday, February the 2nd, 2022, after a report of concern was made about the toddler. At around 10 a.m., a call was made to the emergency services, as a result of which an ambulance was dispatched to Upper Guard Gardens in Gisborough. When the crew arrived at the scene of the emergency, they found the front door open. Apparently, there was no one downstairs and so the paramedics had to go upstairs in the house. When they entered the bedroom, they found it in darkness and Carol was lying on the bed. She was in cardiac arrest. Carol's mother, Christine, was the one who was performing CPR on Carol. One of the paramedics then noticed a child lying on the bed. He was two-year-old Daniel. When they picked him up, they noticed him floppy and lifeless. Efforts were made to try and revive him, but they were proven hopeless. He was already dead. He had been suffocated by Carol. Carol was seen to have a large wound and a number of smaller wounds to her neck and there was a substantial amount of blood on the bedding. There was also a clear plastic vacuum storage bag on the bed next to her head. This bag was the murder weapon. 
She was taken to the hospital in an ambulance and even though she was able to clearly give her own name and her son's name when she was asked questions about what happened that morning or what happened to Daniel, she stayed silent. She only told paramedics to let her die. On 4th of February, whilst she was in the hospital, she was arrested on the suspicion of murder of Daniel. She said, I don't remember, he was my son. Carol's mother walked round to Upper Guard Gardens and let herself in the house. She found a note in the hallway which read, quote, just ring the police, mom. Don't go into the bedroom. You don't need to see it. I love you and I'm so sorry, end of quote. There was another similar note stuck to the bedroom door. Other notes were recovered in which, among other things, Carol said that the only way for her to protect Daniel was to take him with her. This was a clear indication that she had planned and had it in her mind to kill Daniel and then take her own life. This was a premeditated killing which had been planned in advance. She deliberately killed Daniel and, after her own attempt, the arrival of her mother saved her. Daniel was examined by a forensic pathologist, Dr. Louis Mulcahy, who found the cause of Daniel's death. Whilst strictly unascertain the cause of death, it was in keeping with asphyxia caused by the application of a plastic bag. DNA from both Daniel and Carol was found within the bag. So, most likely, Carol put the bag over Daniel's head and held it there until she was satisfied that she killed him. When she was interviewed under caution, Carol denied killing Daniel, saying that she only remembered taking tablets and wanting to end her life. But she didn't want to harm Daniel. She also said she couldn't remember anything after taking the tablets and her plan was only to end her life, not Daniel's life. She even said that she had no idea what happened to her son. She did admit to the police that she was the, ra the one who wrote the notes, but she had no intention of killing Daniel. There was no evidence that this happened at a time when she was not mentally capable to understand what was happening. She didn't do it in the heat of the moment. You might be wondering why did Carol specifically choose February the 2nd as the day to murder her own son. It was in fact her mother who told police that her daughter was due to attend court on that day over the joint custody battle. Daniel's father, Stephen Green, made an application to increase contact with his son, the son that he described as my world. Stephen Green had attended the same court on February the 2nd this year, expecting there to be a fact-finding family court hearing into the background of the dispute, only to be told that his son had been killed. Detective Inspector Matt Hollingsworth, senior investigating officer from the Cleveland Police Homicide and Major Inquiry Team, described the case as barbaric. Quote, how a parent or a mother can do that is beyond comprehension, end of quote, he said. He explained how Carol picked that date in advance. She knew that day she was going to kill her son. He added, quote, there's been no explanation offered. She picked the date, she picked the method, she knew when her child woke up that morning as normal, his day was going to be normal in his head. She's fed him, she's gone through the normal routine, we know exactly what she's fed him. In his mind, he's woke up in a normal day. The sad thing is, that day she knew she was going to kill him and then kill herself. In what I think is a completely selfish act. Is the Crown's case that she suffocated him by wholly placing him in a bag or placing his head in a bag. How a parent or a mother can do that is beyond comprehension, end of quote. Tearful Stefan bravely gave a victim impact statement during the sentencing at Teesside Crown Court and outside court. He told how because of the actions of an evil person, a person who should have been one of the two people who Daniel should have felt safest with, there is an entire lifetime of firsts lost. 
The grieving dad said, quote, he was my entire world. I used to call him my little star. I miss hearing him laugh and holding him in my arms. The shocking nature of the loss has made everything worse. I now suffer with PTSD and night terrors. I haven't been able to work and have been on the sick since it all happened. My mom and dad have been broken to the core. Even friends of the family have been hit hard. Some days I find myself thinking it may be easier if I wasn't here any longer. I never, get, I never got to see his first steps or hear his first words. All of that was stolen from me. End of quote. This tragedy has broken our family, our friends and our community. But we will rebuild. We never got to make a connection with Liza. We never got to see his first steps, hear his first words. And now because of the actions of an evil person, a person who should have been one of the two people who he should have felt safest with, there is an entire lifetime at first lost. I would like to thank the police for their hard work in bringing justice as swiftly as possible for the support they have offered us and the support we continue to get. Special thanks to our police family liaison officers, Graham and Helen, for making this horrendous process as easy as you possibly could. I would like to... I would like to thank the paramedics, who I know did everything they could within their power to save Daniel's life. And to our friends and the community at large, we thank you for all the support you have given us. Thank you. Five months on from the tragic incident which saw Daniel lose his life, his mother has received her sentence. She showed no emotion as she was put behind bars. The evil mother prepared a vacuum storage bag, a knife and tablets and taken the unaware child to the bedroom of their upper garth garden's home. Even though she has taken full responsibility now for the murder of her son, she is yet to disclose the final tragic moments of the toddler's life. Even though initially she denied having anything to do with Daniel's death, after being confronted with the overwhelming amount of evidence, she finally admitted to doing it. The heartbreaking details of the Daniel James Hodgson Green's murder were laid bare on Friday, 15th of July, 2022 at Teesside Crown Court. Judge Paul Watson on sentencing her said, quote, there is but one sentence for murder, which is mandatory life imprisonment. I am required to determine the minimum term to be served before you are eligible to be considered for release by the parole board. I emphasize that the assessment I'm required to make is not a determination of when you will be released, but of the minimum term before you can be considered for release. Whether you are released then will be a matter for the parole board. It may be very much longer before you are actually released. Even then, you will remain on license for the rest of your life. The sentence, therefore, is imprisonment for life with a minimum term of 18 years, 4 months, before you can be considered for parole. That term forced to be reduced by the 158 days you have served on remand. End of quote. 40-year-old Carol Hodgson was imprisoned for life for the murder of her two-year-old son, Daniel James Hodgson Green. On February the 10th, 2022, a few days after Daniel died, the community gathered to remember him. Around 100 people, including family members and friends, came with flowers, balloons, candles and, ca and cuddly toys. A minute silence was held and young children lit sparklers which they waved in the air to mark the two-year-old's short life. One woman said, quote, This is not about one thing or one person. This is about rallying round as a community and showing our love for Daniel, end of quote. Another of the well-wishers added, quote, Everyone is heartbroken about what has happened, but we are here 
to show our support. End of quote. An organizer of the vigil who got the word out via social media said, quote, I advertised it on Facebook and everyone got involved. I haven't seen a turnout in Gisborough like this for a very long time. I've been collecting teddy bears from the charity shops and laying them every day as I walk past. End of quote. Organizers now hope to fund for a memorial bench for two-year-old Daniel. In a moving statement, Stephen Green told the judge, quote, I wish I could say more on Daniel's personality, but we only knew him as a baby before Carol disappeared with him and cut off all contact. He was my entire world. The day he was born, I truly knew what love was. I knew what it felt like to have a higher purpose, to do everything within my power to give him the best life, one full of love and happiness. End of quote. He was only two and on the morning of the 2nd of February, his own mum would smother him to death with a plastic bag. Carol Hodgson has been given a life sentence and will serve a minimum of 18 years, four months after confessing to the murder of Daniel Green. His dad told the court he was my entire world. The day he was born, I truly knew what love was. This tragedy, has broken our family, our friends and our community, but we will rebuild. We never got to make a connection with my son. We never got to see his first steps, hear his first words. And now because of the actions of an evil person, a person who should have been one of the two people who he should have felt safest with, there is an entire lifetime of firsts lost. The court heard how Hodgson, in a premeditated and planned murder, was found in a darkened room by her mother with cuts to her neck. Daniel's lifeless body laying next to her. Having attempted to take her own life, she'd left two notes telling her mum not to come into the bedroom, stating you don't want to see this, just ring the police, I'm gone, I'm so sorry. For me, it's almost beyond comprehension that Carol Hodgson picked the date in advance. She knew a long time in advance that that was going to be the day that she was going to kill her son. Um, there's been no explanation offered. She picked the date, she picked the method. She knew that when her child woke up that morning as normal, his day was going to be normal in his head. The sad thing is, Carol knew that that day she was going to kill him. The court heard how Carol Hodgson woke up that day in the house knowing she was due to attend a hearing about an application by Daniel's dad to increase his access with his son. Carol Hodgson had previously denied Stephen Green access to his son, who she had not allowed him to visit since early 2020. When her attempt on her own life proved unsuccessful, Hodgson went on to make unfounded allegations against Mr Green's level of care towards Daniel in an attempt to deflect from her own actions. Carol Hodgson now accepts that she had no rational basis to believe that Mr Green was anything other than a loving father. Daniel's father described him as his North Star, the guiding light home. But as he concluded his personal statement in court, he said his life has now lost all meaning. Chris, a real sense of loss from everyone involved in this case. Yeah, that's right. I mean, when the officers came out of the court to address the, the media, there wasn't a dry eye in sight. You could tell that everybody working on the case had been moved by it. And the detective himself commented saying that uh, he wouldn't have had been able to find half the dignity that was displayed by Daniel's father. And, and going to Daniel's father, he's going home tonight with some kind of justice, uh, but also a lifetime of loss. And that will be very difficult for him to come to terms with. For the life of me guys, having reached almost the end of this video, I cannot comprehend how some parents think that it's okay to take their child's life just because they don't want to share custody with the other parent. In Carol's case, it was clear that she didn't want anything to do with Stefan and whilst it's okay, fine, you don't want any contact with your ex-partner, you shouldn't take that opportunity away from your son. A child needs both his parents and even if 
the parents are not together, he should be given a chance to form a relationship with his dad. But Carol was very selfish and she only thought of herself. She didn't really think about Daniel at all. She went as far as to cut all contact with Stefan since Daniel was a baby. She didn't even give Daniel the opportunity to know his dad. It's just honestly beyond my comprehension. And I truly think that she wanted to end her life as well so she doesn't have to pay for her actions. I think that this was the only reason she did it. What do you guys think about this case? This I find is truly, truly horrific. To wake up with a plan in your mind that you are going to end your baby's life and you even prepare everything, the knife, that uh, you are going to cut yourself so you can end your life as well. The vacuum bag which you will be using to suck it, your own baby is just, is just heartbreaking. What kind of an evil heart you need to have to do that. And just because for the trivial reason that you don't want your baby's dad to see your baby. You don't want the baby's dad to be involved in the child's life which is just it's just mind-blowing really because like i said carol she only thought about herself she didn't think about uh, daniel at all she didn't think about stefan at all she only thought about herself and she only she saw this as i don't know maybe it was just revenge to get back at stefan maybe she only did it for revenge not out of spite but maybe for revenge or maybe she did it to kind of show him if I can't have him all to myself, then nobody else can have him. And like I said, I think that the only reason why she wanted to kill herself as well was that she doesn't have to face the consequences of her actions. I don't think there was any other reason apart from that that she did it. But please guys, let me know what do you think in the comment section down below and also all the makeup that I used in today's video is already found in the description below the links for the makeup are in the description down below and under this video so if you, you are interested in anything that i use today you can find the links below thank you guys so much for watching take care and stay safe and i will see you in the next one bye